Hello YouTube. In this video I'm going to show you how to do a complete install of Windows Server 2008 R2. So let's start up the VM and get the install rolling. This would be like you just turned on the server with the actual DVD drive in the tray to boot. Anyhow, just like with Windows 7, you're going to come up with the same type of installer screen. You have your language, your time currency format, and USB keyboard, or your keyboard input method. US. Just click next. And this will be all familiar to you if you've ever installed Windows 7. Hit install now. If you have an image that has multiple uh, versions of the server installer, then like this, you'll get a pop-up where it has a whole bunch of different versions. All of these are the 64-bit installs. Uh, for this particular install, we're going to use the 2008 R2 Enterprise install. So click Next. I accept the license terms Next. Now I could do an upgrade because what was on here was server 2008 and it's the 32-bit version. I don't want to do that. I want to use custom. And since there's already an operating system on here, I'm going to select that drive, hit drive options, and delete the partition that's on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and click new to create a new partition. Once you hit new, it'll automatically allocate the maximum amount of space for that drive. So just click apply and click OK. And now you'll see that you have a system reserve partition just like you do whenever you install Windows 7. And then you have your partition 2 which is the primary partition for the OS. With partition 2 selected, click format, click OK. This is just to make sure that the actual file system is ready. And then once it's done, with that partition 2 still selected as the primary type, click next. Now it's going to copy over all the files required, extract them out onto the hard drive, install whatever features are required and updates, and then it'll complete the installation. Of course, at that point, it's also going to reboot. When it reboots, it'll finish up the last little bit of the installation there, and your server 2008 install will be complete. Uh, Windows 7, the installer for Windows 7 and server 2008 and 2008 R2, uh, very little interaction. There's not much you have to do. The majority of it's just configuring your drives and stuff. So the actual interactiveness of what you have to do to perform and complete an install has become far less complicated and you don't have to know as much to perform the install. However, you have far less control over what all features it installs. The problem being is so much stuff is so integrated into the Windows operating system now that uh, out of fear of rendering your OS completely useless, you probably wouldn't want to deselect anything anyway. There we go. She's ready to reboot. Now it's got a few other little things for the setup that it's got to go through, finish and configure, and then it'll eventually dump us to the login screen where you hit Control Alt Delete and log in for the first time. Which is where we're heading right now. the installation setup will continue after restarting your computer we're going to have another restart and then we'll finally be able to finish up the install and log in setup is preparing your computer for first use I used to hate seeing that screen it's been around since uh, 
God, Windows 98. Can't remember if it was in on the installer or 95 or not anymore. It's been so long. I know it was there for Windows 98 and every since. And yes, it is unfortunately even on the server editions of Windows. And the user's password has to be changed. That's normal. You have to set up the password for administrator. Whatever you do, don't use a simple password and don't leave the administrator password blank. That is absolutely bad practice. Plus, it makes it super easy for anybody to hack your server. Oops. There we go. Password successfully changed. And now it's going to load to the desktop for the very first time. And there you are. This has been a complete clean install of Windows Server 2008 R2. Granted, yes, it was installed into a virtual machine. It's not active because I do not have a key for this, nor am I going to set up a key. This was entirely for demonstration purposes. Um, once you actually get it all set up, you go in, put in your key, activate your windows. You will actually have full control over the entire system. You can set it up as a domain controller, read-only domain controller. Um, you can set it up as a web server. You can set it up to do whatever you want. You can set it up to host your own game servers. Um, if you have an enterprise database, probably should have installed the database version of the 2008 R2. However, you can run massive databases and stuff like that in enterprise environments. There are all kinds of applications and things that might run on it. Um, you can set it up with a lot of different disk arrays, different types of file shares. Um, you can set up Exchange Server on it. You can literally set it up with uh, as a SharePoint server. I mean, from this point, once you get the OS installed, you can basically take it and fulfill out whatever role it needs and is required by your organization. Or if you have it as your own personal server, whatever you might want. You can set it up to host a Plex server, um, guide streaming audio. I mean, uh, it's almost endless what all you can actually do. There, There's a massive amount of things. You can set it up as an application server where it actually hosts different applications that can be used by different systems. You can set up your own cloud server where you can link up with your cell phone. Uh, God, link it out to different websites and stuff, except where people can download from your own cloud store. You can upload your own pictures and stuff to it from your mobile devices. Uh, the, the limits are basically your own imagination and what all you can find and figure out how to do. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have a great day.